Quite often as we're developing our e-learning content, we want to include appropriate images to enrich that material. So for instance, I'm creating a Moodle assignment and I'd love a photo of the Flinders Street Station to make it more interesting and meaningful for my students. I want to ensure, however, as I do that, that I'm mindful of any copyright requirements and that I'm not in breach of copyright by reusing that image. To ensure that, I'm going to use this dedicated search engine called search.creativecommons.org. This will search a whole range of image collections as listed lower for materials that match your search terms and in doing so, only return results where permission for use has been given. So let's have a go at that. I'm going to choose to search Flickr. I'm going to enter my search term. And this is not for commercial use, nor do I intend to modify or adapt it. So I'm going to take those two ticks away. By doing so, it will actually return more images in this search. So here we go. So it's now bounced me over to Flickr. It's done the search that I had asked it to do. And it's only returned results which allow which are under this Creative Commons license type. There's some interesting photos here that I can look to and explore. Also Flickr arranges them into various sorts. It's sorted by relevancy at the moment. I often jump over to this interesting view as this is photos that the Flickr community has voted as being particularly interesting. So I can look through this to find an example that I like. Perhaps it's this photo here. As I click on that, lower down, it describes the licensing requirements. These symbols are meaningful and the easiest way to find out what that license is, is to click on the statement here, some rights reserved. And it tells me that I'm allowed to use it if I give attribution to the author, if I do so for non-commercial use, and if I have no derivatives, which means I'm not taking that artwork and editing it, say, in Photoshop to become something different. So now I need to be mindful that I meet those requirements and I give proper attribution. That can be tricky, but I found this lovely little tool that helps in that. And it's called this Flickr Attribution Bookmark. So I'll send the URL for this with the video recording. But this is designed very specifically to take Flickr images and give you the attribution so that you can properly attribute them anywhere that you use them. All you need to do at this point is to scroll to the bottom, grab this button here, dragging it, and drop it up in your browser bar. So it becomes kind of like a little bookmark. Now I'm going to return to the image that I was previously interested in using. And I'm actually going to click on this new bookmark. Up will pop a little window. And in this, it provides the text that you need to attribute this to its author. So down here, for instance, is a text that if you were to use this, say, in a Word document or a PowerPoint file, you could include the image, put that bit of text underneath it, and you've met your copyright obligations. However, much more interesting to me is this text up here. This is actually a HTML code that I could place anywhere that I can paste HTML, which includes Moodle, and it will put the image in and also attribute it appropriately. So I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to return now to Moodle. So I'm in the page that I want to edit. I have a piece of HTML code that I want to include into this page somewhere. So I need just for a moment to jump into the HTML view. That's indicated by these right and left arrows here. I click onto that button. This shows you in essence the code that makes up this page. If you're not familiar with HTML, it can look a little bit scary first of all, but I'm gonna look at some landmarks because I wanna put it just after the heading then and now. So I wanna place it in just about there, I think. And then I'm gonna paste which puts all that code that had been previously copied into the page and I'm going to hit update. So let's have a look. We've now got the photo, it's in place and it's properly attributed. So if I were to now save this, let me just quickly save. Save and display. This is what our students will see. Here is the attribution below. It links that attribution to the license type to the original author, so this is the person who took the photo, 
and in doing so it meets all of our obligations for copyright and it meets the requirements as specified by the owner. So we now have a much more interesting uh, Moodle page and we also meet all of our licensing requirements.